were there two? It's, it's local. It's local. Pardon me? It's local. Both? Yes. Okay. And do we know the economic impact or what, uh, what tax revenue would not be realized if this is performed? by the emergency manager? Well, during the last tax year, the winter taxes collected for the Capitol Theater was $2,218.11. And the summer 2013 taxes was $13,109.02 for a total of about $15,325.13. Right, and how are, these, these, uh, how are these things calculated using what particular formula? Because we have a, a a bouquet of tax abatements in the downtown area. This one's a little different. I think this one was um, obsolete, was also used by uh, the old Hyatt Hotel. I think. Uh, I think the last one we did was in 2011. It was the Michigan School for the Deaf. Okay. That's the last um, Oprah tax abatement we did. Do we but calculate it by property value or how do we calculate it by? It's calculated by property value. So the, pro the value of this property, let's see. If I have that here. It's actually three different parts. When you look at calculation of taxes, there's taxes assessed against the value of the land, then taxes against uh, the value of the building, and then uh, the personal property. This is just for taxes assessed against the building. We will still be collecting taxes against whatever the value of the property is, the land, and a personal property, which is machinery and equipment that's in the building. Right. So this, does this property, does this particular property benefit from any other uh, tax abatements currently? No, I don't think so. I don't think, no, it's not a renaissance zone because if it were, uh, the owner would not even have to apply for this. It would be everything. Okay, so this is the only tax abatement that, we, uh, that, that is being applied for this particular address or this new established district? Yes. Now, is districts usually established by a parcel number and address only, or is districts established by a geographic area. It's a geographical area. So it can be just an address. It can be a number of addresses that are contiguous. Right. Have, uh, how many of these districts have been identified in a downtown area just by address alone? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think this may be the only one because the other ones are Renaissance zones, which is I guess that is a, a district. It is a district area. Um, a Renaissance zone. Let's see. I think we have one. Excuse it me, just Glenda. I, I believe one. there are about five of them that have been established by address along, including the Robert David Allen building. Okay. And a couple of bu other buildings on Saginaw Street. Once we did the district, then I believe we did the individual things after and, that. And I so think they were five. extended in 2008, the Renaissance zone districts. Right. 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 And, and the reason I bring this up is because, you know, when we look at the, the, uh, the bouquet of what I call the bouquet of tax abatements and, and tax incentives that's provided to the downtown area, how it's being picked and choose, mm -hmm. and I'm just trying to figure out a pattern on how these things are established because we have several businesses downtown, and I think some of them are benefiting from um, different types of tax abatements, but if a district can be created just by address alone, I don't want it to be uh, where it seems to be un uh, a level of uh, unequity as it relates to these type of abatements uh, being afforded to some businesses in the downtown area. And so I'm, I'm concerned about establishing districts for one particular address versus a geographic area. But we can go forward with this public hearing and I'll uh, reserve some questions for later, but I just want to make sure uh, that we looked at this as in a contiguous order, being that this one has not been approved and right. the applicant is now applying for the abatement that's uh, to our knowledge, has not been approved by the emergency manager, has not been done in the resolution form signed by him. Yes, but it could not be approved until after the district has <coughs> been established. I, I, I understand, but the, yeah, no. yeah. Okay, are you through, Glenda? I'm through. Thank you. All right, is there anyone that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Was, was it, was it, was it, I think he was gonna speak. She mentioned that she wanted him to speak. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mr. Farrell. Wait, R.L. Wait, R.L. Did you want someone? Yeah. Troy? Thank you. 
Uh, my name is Troy Farah. Our family has owned the Capitol Theater building since 1977, so for 36 years. Um, and uh, it's important that we don't mix this building up with anything else that's going on downtown. Um, although uh, we are part of a, a bigger project of revitalization of downtown, the Capitol Theater building has been owned by the Farah family since 1977. And when I heard uh, the, the folks speak about the Atwood Stadium and the labor of love. Um, this also has been our labor of love for the past 36 years. And although it is a privately owned building, it really is a community asset. And the Capitol Theater Building has been called the best preserved, unrestored theater in the United States. Um, and, and really, we, we've been dedicated th to this building and the preservation of this building for 36 years. And, and we have not profited in the past 36 years, truthfully. Um, so what we propose for, for the Capitol Theater is, is really a Fox Theater of Flint. Um, this is about a $10 million restoration of the Capitol Theater to turn it into a 2,000 seat capacity uh, entertainment venue. And it will attract uh, patrons from all over Southeast Michigan. It will be a tipping point project for downtown Flint in, in that it will really anchor uh, the arts and entertainment uh, district for downtown. Um, so what, what the, t the $10 million investment or, or projected investment um, is, is really all new heating, cooling, electrical, plumbing, seats, uh, decorative painting, uh, uh, you know, concessions and bars and asbestos abatement and brownfield remediation. That's all within this sort of uh, a big massive investment. The, the reason that you need the uh, property tax abatement, um, and, and just to be clear on what actually happens here, we do pay $15,000 a year currently in property taxes. Those do not get abated. We will continue to pay what we are currently paying. What we're trying to do with this incentive is not let the property taxes double or triple or quadruple. Because theaters around the country struggle to make a profit. You're lucky if you break even, especially in the current state of the economy in Flint, Michigan. This, we are going way out on the limb making this investment and, and taking on this project. So the, the return on the investment, when you make an investment like this in Flint and in downtown Flint, is, is the economic impact on downtown. It's the benefit to the community. It's not a financial return on investment to the owners. That's not where, we're not, we're not truthfully in this uh, because we're gonna profit. We're in it because we believe in the revitalization of downtown. We've been investing in the revitalization of downtown and we continue to invest in it. And we have not profited from it. Um, so we, we, we expect that we're gonna create about 200 jobs out of this project. Those jobs are, are mixed between you know, the construction jobs, the, the jobs within the theater, which would be you know, ticket takers and stage hands and uh, box office workers and, and workers within the office, um, but also jobs within the building. The Capitol Theater building consists of a uh, 2,000 seat theater, but also has about 25,000 square feet of office and retail space. So we expect that to get fo hopefully fully leased up and, and generate more jobs. And then probably the biggest impact and effect of jobs is the ripple effect it has downtown uh, into the restaurants and bars and activity that it creates in, in your downtown. And, and you don't have to look too far if anybody remembers what it looked like around the Fox Theater when that was uh, newly restored 25 years ago. That was a whole blighted district down there. And really, the Fox Theater has revitalized all of downtown Detroit. And we believe that the Capitol Theater is going to have a, a, a similar same tremendous uh, effect and impact on, on downtown Flint. So that's, that's sort of 
what, what I have to say, I'm, I'm willing to answer any additional questions that, that you guys have, would have. Thanks, Troy. I'm going to open any questions yes, before sir. I open up the public hearing. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Fair, thanks, uh, thanks for your family's commitment. Yeah, I Thank remember you. going to the Capitol Theater when, it was, uh, when I was younger. But Mr. Fair, are you, are you a benefactor or your theater is a benefactor of any other abatements or any of the loan dollars from the city of Flint? Um, for this restoration and or other? For things? this restoration, no, not. But the, the Capitol Theater was in the Renaissance zone for uh, mm -hmm. 10 years or so, and that phased out, right? That phased out. So now our taxes are $15,000 a year, um, and we're pay we've been paying those taxes. The Capitol Theater building is not does not receive any other city incentives. The, the, the redevelopment of the, the project consists of federal historic tax credits, new market tax credits, um, state uh, assistance from the MEDC uh, and MISHTA, and then hopefully our nonprofit partner, but not, not city assistance. The historic tax credits you're talking about, didn't you, did you make application through the city to receive those historic tax credits? Well, that's through, that's federal. Pardon those me? are federal. I'm, okay, federal. Those are federal. So the application is made through the, uh, uh, Department of Interior. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank Sorry. you. I'm yep. going to open up uh, the public hearing now. RL. My name is RL Mitchell, and uh, I'm here to talk about that theater. And uh, I was uh, in that blight program, what you call it, to Flint. I was still a part of this black stuff. Every time I get a job, I was, I had a job in two blocks away from Capitol Theater at Buckingham Alley. It's called Stepping Restaurant. Before it, before the, you people tore it down, I had an accident on the job. But I could have sued them, but I was, I was just be, be, be turned Christian, and I was uh, figured as well they got it on. I did on tape and stuff, and uh, I see what the dude talking about, and uh, about this blight. I keep everywhere I go, I get keep blighting out. I, like uh, thanks to Madam Brown, she gave me a, another place to stay. But I found out that's another. She moved me into another blight neighborhood. By the time I got over there, I was my house was robbed, it was burglarized, and everything else. And I went to vote in the poll. I can't vote until November six. That's another blight. Everywhere I go seem to be blighted out. But, but sir, what the man talking about, I'm dealing with these, we the peoples, but born in 1970, they asked me to go to, they, they always looking out for me, talking about they don't want me to get hurt. I always be a victim of circumstances in this blight stuff, like that parking lot over there behind Birkenham map. Hey, Scotty, go to your next step up. Everybody listen. You know, Thank you, R.L. Yeah, my name is Eric Mays, and <clears throat> I would like to address this particular um, request. Clearly, I hear questions from the council, particularly Council Neely, and you were saying it was for the public, but as a member of the public, we had to learn the hard way. And I learned the hard way by participating in the public hearing of July 2nd, 2012. I learned that the intent is for the legislative body, whether it's you guys or Mike Brown, the intent is to be here 